I'm here with a 2020 Audi A4 and today I just want to go over 10 things that are very interesting, very cool, and very clever in the design and engineering space of this vehicle. This covers many different VW and Audi Group products, but today we're featuring the 2020 B9 generation of the Audi A4 Quattro Premium Sedan. First thing that's really interesting and clever on, in this car in terms of design and engineering is the fact that, you know, you look around and you think, where is that windshield washer fluid bottle reservoir and where do you add your windshield washer fluid? And you look around and you see that's the coolant tank, you got the oil, uh, oil add uh, port right there and you know you go around and you figure out it's way back here under the clamshell hood where you have your windshield washer fluid add fill um, reservoir right there so it's mounted somewhere underneath the passenger footwell underneath the cowl of the vehicle uh, but the add uh, station or add fill is right here so it's really hard to see at first unless you know this car and it's kind of unique to um, the Evo platform for MLB, which is an Audi architecture. Um, and so this particular one, the Audi A4, as well as the Audi A5 Sportback, um, in terms of Audi sedans, have it over on that side of the car. So that's really interesting. The next clever engineering design is the fact that this is a clamshell hood. It has dual hood latches for improved stability at high speed so you don't get hood flutter. And shutting the hood there, it overlaps the headlights, so it's called shingling. It's a design term for kind of making sure that different panels overlap others to hide gaps. So the clamshell hood design just helps close off any unwanted lines or gaps between body panels. Because when you look straight on from the side, you don't really see a gap. All you see is more sheet metal that's underneath and the clamshell hood is, is shingled over that to minimize the gap and you can't see any gaps inside the hood that region. It also improves the sealing ability of that hood to reduce flutter at high speed, reduces wind noise as a result of not having any air that's getting through that hood cut line and into the passenger compartment and up through the windshield. So that reduces wind noise and just creates an overall cleaner look. And Audi is able to get away with this because of some of their sheet metal uh, design. Over the years, they've used a lot of aluminum sheet metal design. I believe the hood on this is actually steel, whereas some of the uh, body panels, such as the door panels, are aluminum. But regardless, their sheet metal formation is excellent, and that results in the shingling effect over the fenders that creates that really clean, sharp, seamless look. The third thing about the Audi A4 B9 generation is that on standard models with forward collision warning and automatic emergency braking, it just has a single camera right there at the top of the windshield. No radar sensors in the front unless you opt for the advanced driver assistance package, which this car does not have. These bubbles here are just for cosmetic purposes on lower end trims such as this premium model. Um, if you get the driver assistance package with the adaptive cruise control, those become long range radar sensors in the uh, driver and passenger side of the, of the front bumper. But it's really interesting because Audi chose a single camera design, which was kind of, you know, not very common back in 2016, late 2015 when this car started production, because it still has to perform all the automatic emergency braking functions up to a speed of about 51 miles an hour. So that results in just the, the fact that, um, you know, this car is kind of, uh, kind of is a groundbreaking design in terms of that function without having to use stereoscopic cameras in the windshield such as Subaru um, or BMW for instance and other automakers like Tesla have gone to that single camera in the windshield uh, and Audi was doing that all the way back in late 2015 when they started production on this Audi A4. The fourth thing that's really clever in terms of the design and engineering of this car is actually the fact that it uses lug bolts instead of um, lug nuts and uh, well I should say it has lug nuts but it uses lug bolts instead of the traditional mounting method that's on the wheels and tires of the car. This is very common amongst European cars and Volkswagen Group has kind of watered that down and gone to a less expensive method um, for the North American market because consumers want to be able to mount their tires more easily onto their car whereas lug bolts are a little bit less expensive to manufacture are less uh, weight intensive so that reduces the rotational mass 
of the wheels themselves, which improves fuel economy, which uh, reduces unsprung mass as well. So that improves cornering ability, improves fuel economy and acceleration, but by a very, very small amount. We're talking a matter of like one to two pounds, maybe three pounds per vehicle that it would save in weight. But in terms of like corporate manuf manufacturing and design strategy, a lot of these design companies are in silos, for instance, and the wheel and tire package team has to be able to meet their weight goals as well. And so when you have lug bolts, you're able to meet those packaging and weight requirements of a vehicle to improve the overall vehicle performance. And so that's very common. And uh, this Audi A4 includes that design for the mounting strategy on the wheels. Fifth clever or interesting design feature about the Audi A4 and a matter of other Audis on the MLB Evo architecture is that when you open up the door, the only light that comes on is the side in the corner that you open the door and then it fades out after you close the door. So when I step into the driver's side, you're only gonna see that one light that's gonna illuminate, and that's gonna be the same for every door. Now, I'm not exactly sure why Audi chose to do this. It could be because of, I don't know, perceived energy savings, reduced wear and tear on the light bulbs, even though they're LED and shouldn't wear out prematurely. Um, could just be for a sleeker look, uh, you know, that, you know, it just allows the driver to have more style and elegance when you're getting in the car at night. But that's an interesting design quirk and feature of this car. The sixth interesting design and engineering feature of this car is that it uses a very advanced architecture that's shared across the whole Audi lineup in addition to uh, the Porsche lineup for the SUVs as well as the Lamborghini Urus um, as well as the Bentley Bentayga. It's called the MLB Evo architecture and it uses a very sophisticated suspension system that's double wishbone up front, multi-link in the rear with aluminum front and rear subframes, aluminum knuckles, uh, aluminum hubs and just um, all aluminum underneath that suspension system. It also has a virtual axis steering system that improves on center stability, response and heft of the steering so that when you're going at high speeds of 75 plus miles per hour on the freeway here in the US or over 130 kilometers an hour in Europe, which is about 83 miles an hour, you feel that German stability, that German feel that everybody associates these cars with. So it makes it feel very stable, very planted at high speed, and more and more cars in the class, you know, the BMW 3 Series, the Alfa Romeo Giulia, and even SUVs like the Land Rover Velar and the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, the brand new 2021 L and 2022 short wheelbase have that virtual axis steering system to improve on center stability. It's a very expensive um, steering setup that's only achievable for the most part on high-end sports cars equipped with a double wishbone front suspension. But this car was, you know, in terms of you know, sub $45,000 cars, this is one of the few that actually has it. And I'm surprised that Audi was able to include that in a car that's relatively inexpensive compared to the average car price of $49,000 in today's market. The seventh interesting engineering design feature is the fact that it has kind of a minimal amount in use of door primary mounted door seals. And I have some experience in this realm as I was actually an FCA engineer for uh, door seals and body closures in the body and white department uh, in Michigan before uh, moving out, out of that role. So very interesting in terms of Audi's design philosophy in terms of their door primary seals. They use a single bolt design here that's taped on seals using, I believe, 3M pressure sensitive adhesive that goes underneath the, uh, the door seal. Um, and it's a one piece that doesn't have any molds that goes around the entire perimeter of the door. It's robotically applied, which means that the robot actually picks up the door and applies the door seal all around using only tape and pressure sensitive adhesive. Usually it's a 3M EX4311 series tape that's used. Um, and you also notice that the door primary seal goes all the way to the hem edge of the door inner panel, which allows very minimal sound to be able to intrude into the cabin. It also allows the door to seal as far away from the occupants along this edge. So that way when they get out of the car and their pant leg gets on a dirty piece here, you can see this is the ceiling line. It seals on this radius here 
and allows your pants to be clean if you were to wipe it here and seals way down here, reducing noise, uh, reducing all of those, um, uh, all the dirt that comes onto your pants and reducing the noise inside the cabin. The front door is the same philosophy. You notice you don't see it as much on the outside here because the door needed to have its clo a close out in order to meet the architecture of the rear door. But down here, it meets all the way down at the hem edge. So that seals way down here on this bottom radius right here on the, uh, the, the, the sill of the car. And that's actually really impressive. It reduces the amount of seals and in terms of manufacturing bill of material cost and manufacturing logistics. You don't need to have a separate sill seal that's mounted on the body side. Or You also do not have a rear fender closeout seal, which would usually be mounted back here a little bit farther outside of this door primary seal or mounted on the body right here to close out dirt from getting inside here or creating a whistling noise in this area. You don't need to have that on this car because the door seals are positioned as far out on that as far out on that perimeter of that door as possible. That's really impressive that Audi was able to do that. It's really enabled by the fact that you can robotically apply the seal and you don't need to have packaging space for those uh, push pins that typically go inside of a door primary seal on a car. So very neat fact, and I will say it doesn't have a door defender front cut line seal because you get the closeout needed by the fact that Audi does their sheet metal design so well and actually the fender shingles over the front door when you close it and that's why you have this extra rad here radius and that creates a very seamless look with the gap that doesn't have any black between it it's almost like a gap hider so it creates a very seamless streamlined look eighth interesting feature of the audi a4 as well as many other vw and audi group products is the fact that the door hood release or the uh, hood release lever inside the cabin is actually not able to be opened while the door is closed. Most cars have it under here or have a lever farther forward that is able to be opened while you're inside the car. Well, Audi reduces, I believe, their corporate liability and improves driver safety just in case, you know, your foot were to hit this lever um, if you're moving around while driving for some reason so it doesn't accidentally pop open the lever and create a safety hazard with if the hood were to fly open. Um, so you have to actually open the door in order to access the hood lever or else it's blocked by the door trim panel right here. So that creates a more streamlined look. You don't see a gap between the speaker and the um, trim panel that's mounted in the in the footwell up here. You know, notice that cars like the Alfa Romeo Giulia has a big gap in between that area that's not hid by any, you know, seam, seamless look. Cars like the Audi A4 here will you know, the door panel kind of goes in and covers that gap that's normally there while also providing a surface for the lever to hit in case you were to accidentally pull the lever while you're driving. The ninth thing about the Audi A4 is that when you're driving and there's a car that's in your blind spot, if you were to turn your turn signal and the car is in your path of travel or if you're about to enter their path of travel with your turn signal on, though the uh, light for the blind spot will illuminate and flash at a very high sequence in a very fast frequency. Um, but also what's interesting is even though this car does not have lane departure warning or lane steering assist, only for North America, you had to get a premium model with a convenience package or a premium plus or prestige. For 2021 and newer to have the steering move itself on the freeway, um, or to have lane sensing abilities, but this car still senses lanes because if you cross over that lane marker without your turn signal on, it will still light up that mirror. So the camera that's mounted up here that I talked about earlier can still see those lane lines and the functionality is built into the software of this car. However, um, it does not have that steering assist function for 2020 and older B9 A4s in North America, even if you have the convenience package. So it's very interesting that the car can still see the lanes and will flash the light even if you forget to turn on your turn signal and you're entering a car's path of travel that's next to you. And the tenth and final interesting design feature of the Audi A4 is the fact that when you have the vehicle in drive and you put it into S mode, it automatically raises the RPMs from 800 to 1000. So if I put it in sport mode, 
it raised the idle speed up to 1,000 RPM, and that will improve throttle response off the line, reduce turbo lag for a quicker ticket takeoff, and um, it also automatically turns off your engine start-stop function. So if you were to come to a stop, even if you haven't pressed this button, as long as you're in the sport mode, the engine will not shut off at stop signs or stop lights. So it's kind of a nice defeat device and also kind of persuades the driver to drive in a more spirited fashion using the sport mode. So those are 10 interesting design and engineering features that are kind of clever and hidden on the B9 generation of the Audi A4. And as I said before, this is common amongst many other Volkswagen and Audi Group products. But today I just wanted to showcase this car and show you kind of how this car was designed and engineered to be the car that it is being a stable German sports sedan for the road. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please place any questions or comments in the section below and have a good one.